Hello everybody, my name is Eric. Today we're going to be looking at another threat that the Ukrainian government has discovered. It seems like they're being targeted quite heavily by state-sponsored actors, probably uh, from their neighbor of which they're currently in war with. So here we have Cabinet Rat, a backdoor used by, and this is their APT designation for targeted cyber attacks against uh, SOU. Uh, the National Cyber Incident, Cyber Attack, and Cyber Threat Response Team, CERT UA, in September discovered a number of software tools presented in the form of XLL files. Now, an XLL is basically, it's a DLL, but it's a form of XL plugin. It's for doing more sophisticated things, I guess, that you couldn't do with a simple macro. It's kind of a cool thing. A lot of Windows software will do this, but this one is malicious. After it's opened, it quickly shifts from pretending to be an Excel add-in to running malware. So it was sent under the pretense of supposedly being about detentions of people who are trying to cross the Ukrainian border. So it could be like maybe they were trying to go to Russia or they were trying to leave Ukraine or enter Ukraine. So it contains dotatalk.xll, the launch of which would create several files, an exe with random letters, a startup to keep it running, basic xlmath.xll, which is a malicious loader, and, and this is kind of the interesting thing, is the actual rat is hidden in a PNG file. Now, this is probably one of the top YouTube comments I get is, can a PNG hack you? The answer, other than zero days like we saw in that iOS video, basically no. But what can happen is a PNG may not be a PNG. What may happen is there could be some extra data, either stuffed at the end or in the metadata, uh, that's actually shellcode, or it may just not be a valid file at all. In order to ensure persistence, uh, it creates a key in the run branch so that it automatically runs. And then a part of the malware lives in this XLL file, which then reads the PNG for the shellcode. So we're now three layers deep. We had an EXE that ran XL with a malicious XL loader. Let me point out that was all set up by a different malicious XL loader. And then there's shellcode inside of a PNG that is called Cabinet Rat. And that's a backdoor. So it has a couple of these. These are all pretty basic. And in fact, this reminds me of... PA fish, paranoid fish, or uh, Al uh, there's another one uh, as well. I think it's Alkaiser uh, that does something similar. But what it does is it checks for these strings, VMware, VirtualBox, Zen, QEMU, Parallels, and Hyper-V, which is pretty generic, and especially the wine check, because legitimate malware has no reason to do that. The wine Unix file name is not used by malware sandboxes. So I don't know why they would check for that, but then it also checks for the display, two processor cores, and three gigabytes of RAM, and the Audi TSE. Yeah, this is definitely, it seems like a PA fish check, although this one is a real pain because there's no great way of getting rid of it, but it has a lot of false positives because if you enable virtualization-based security or Hyper-V on Windows, Windows becomes a VM, so this might fail. Also checks the debug flag, and then the actual cabinet rat loads, which uses TCP with these ports uh, to transmit it's in packets, which are compressed using zip. And then if they're bigger than 65535 bytes, it's broken into multiple fragments. So there's first of all a connection with Ninja, which gets a response of Bonjour. Then it executes, sends the result, and then it sends the results of successfully executed commands. So it is a full-blown rat where it allows the attacker to run any remote commands that they want. It's not just a stealer. And then it sends information, the BIOS guide, which could be a form of what's called server-side anti-analysis, which is a method of trying to minimize what a researcher discovers. So it does this, it's checking all of that, and it sends all of that off. So that could mean there's additional anti-VM checks on the server, so that if they discovered that a researcher was looking at their work, uh, they might shut down some of the other paths, or at least not send the packets that would activate more. You can get content, it can take screenshots, sends error codes, and here they've got the indicators. Oh, I've got a sample. I got this off of Malware Bazaar, and we're going to try it out. Now, whether it'll work... Uh, it's not guaranteed to, but we might at least see something happen. So it opens a file, reads data from a file. We've actually got a macro trace in script tracer. That's cool. 
and this runs and we can and we can now watch it in action oh so we got startup items we can now see a bunch of config stuff changed http requests okay those could be could be irrelevant uh and we can <laughs> don't know if view only is going to work with macros we did see some of uh, the activity there we also have a second variant here so we can also take a look at this and we immediately see some strange activity and this one actually modifies a bunch of files as well you see more script tracing activity Re seems to read itself that's kind of weird and then it calls xl auto open a now we could just quickly take a look at this in the dissembler i expect it's going to be pretty obfuscated given we're dealing with apt stuff but you never know sometimes <laughs> sometimes they screw up here this is our entry function what what no no why is the i'm confused did binary ninja pull this from somewhere there's no way <laughs> there's no way they did this again well uh, at least now we actually are going to get a good view of it so i'm not mad at them i'm just surprised okay so what what happens we get decode stir pick uh kernel 32 wine function name indices and then we send all of these different things off and these decode then gets function by name yeah so this has somehow they made the mistake of giving this a bunch of uh stuff left in it we can see the rdtsc which of course on a sandbox would probably because it's incredibly difficult to beat the rdtsc check there is a way using kvm and we can see the code for it here so we do rdtsc i'm gonna flip this uh, to assembly just because it makes it a bit easier to understand what's happening here so you do rdtsc you store that in two different registers then you run it again after a cpu id instruction uh, the cpu id forces a vm exit so now on a vm because rdtsc is a timer counter on the x86 cpu on a vm this will take about a thousand cycles i think we call them on a real computer it'll take less than 500 cycles so that's how you can tell using this technique there are some really tricky ways you can try and beat this but it's not easy get module by name spawn xlsx i think we've actually got the blob for the xlsx here on here so this is actually not the name then this is the data for the office.png so we've actually got it here because it's all in this file i'm not sure if Maybe the malware bazaar guy named this. I, either that or someone made a serious mistake. And within the PNG file, there's shellcode. We end up with all this. So interesting idea. Sort of a technicality to the old question of can you hide malware in a PNG? Well, yes, you absolutely can. You can hide malware anywhere in any file. What is more difficult is to make malware that automatically executes when you run an image file. That is practically impossible without a zero day. But if they ship a PNG and an EXE and the EXE is clean, it's still possible for there to be malware in the PNG. So it's kind of an interesting approach. And it might allow for an easier pull-in of additional malware because most edrs and security systems might try and stop you from downloading exes but they might not be as restrictive towards pngs so that's going to be all from me for now please let me know in the comments below what you thought of this video uh, what you think about cabinet rat or any other malware going around and of course i will have links to the sources in the description if you want to go through them fully and follow this story for yourself it's all from me for now bye